Let us not forget everything that happens. It's by the will of Allah. Holy it's time to unite and stand, and we will be the best amongst men. It's not time to be extreme or duty unthinkable. But to stand together as one. Turn into sooner followers, streaming every day. Various platforms, trust me, you'll find a way. Sooner followers. Assalamu alaikum, you class alert. Join us every Saturday and Sunday at 9 p.m. Central for the Articles of Belief by Muhammad S. Adli, right here on Sunnah Followers. Welcome, everybody, for our Hadith class for tonight, which is the 23rd night of Ramadan. Uh, Ramadan, we're in the last 10 days, and mashallah, you want to spend these last 10 days reaping the reward. And how do we reap the reward of the night of decree? Well, by continuing on doing the good deeds that are pleasing to Allah and also making supplications, asking Allah to forgive us of our sins. So everyone, the children included, this is the time that you should be spending, you know, uh, asking Allah to forgive you of your sins. Remember, Allah will forgive as long as you are sincere. And how can a person determine if he or she is sincere? Well, you have to, first of all, stop doing the sin. Secondly, you must feel bad about having committed that sin. And if the sin is a sin that entailed violating the rights of someone, you have to make the restitution for that. And then you have to be determined to never, ever, ever, ever do that sin again. If you meet those criteria, Allah says, Allah says, in fact, Allah promises he promises that he will forgive you, that he will forgive you of that. So, mashallah, I hope Allah forgives all of us of our sins. And so tonight, I mean, and so tonight what we're going to do is take a look at one of the hadiths that I want you guys to ponder, you know, as we go into, uh, uh, you know, that alone time with Allah. Remember, the night of decree, it can be any night. It can be an odd night or an even night. When the prophet said most likely an odd night, he was speaking about that year. The night of Carter changes every year, okay? That's why he said, look for it during all 10 of these days because it could be an even night. It could have been yesterday. It could be tomorrow. You never know. So when you do your alone time tonight with the law to reevaluate yourself, I want you guys to ponder the following hadith that we're going to discuss tonight. And let me put the hadith on the screen so everyone can see it. And also, uh, please take uh, uh, screenshots of the hadith. Uh, so that you can, uh, I mean, of, of my PowerPoint, so you can again have this uh, uh, hadith to refer back to. Um, let me put this up, doing two things at one time. Yeah, okay. And let me share this to the, yeah, there we go. So let me put this hadith up on the screen so everyone can review it. Oh, this is the people in Zoom first. Okay, here we go. And now for you guys. It's called this. This is the hadith. Let's take a look at it. And again, uh, this hadith is from the book written by Sheikh Muhammad Saeed Atli. And this is the book entitled Not One of Us. And what is this book? This is the picture of the book right here. You can purchase it by going to www.atlionline.com. 
And what Sheikh Muhammad Saeed Atli did was he took hadiths from the various different authentic sources, hadiths in which the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam warned us against certain actions or certain behaviors because these actions or, be or behaviors, okay. Because these actions or behaviors are so bad they're so bad uh, that if you did them, uh, they're so horrific that the prophet said, you're not like me. You're not like me. You're not one of us. You're not what I came here with. Okay, so these are actions of behavior that we need to be aware of. And tonight's uh, uh, hadith addresses begging, begging from other people, asking people to help you or asking people to do for you when you are not really in need of any help or when you're not really in need of any uh, uh, aid, okay? And let's take a look at the Hadith. The Hadith was narrated by Sahal ibn al Hazalia. He said, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, whoever begs, when he has enough for himself, is simply asking Allah to give him a great amount of the hell fire. And who is this? You know, the person that transmitted this hadith was a man named Anufali. And he said in another hadith, uh, 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 another person came to him and asked him, well, what do you consider to be enough? What is considered enough? And he said, anyone who has food to eat in the morning and food to eat in the evening, that's enough. So you have no reason to go out begging for other from other people. Y'all understand that? This is a wonderful hadith for us to implement as we go about searching for the reward of the night of decree. A lot of us, we have food. We got more than enough food for one day. We got enough food to last us for the rest of the month, but we're still begging other people to give me, give me, give me, give me some of your food, give me some of your money, give me some of your stuff when we have enough at home. So as Muslims, we have to be careful of this guys the only time that begging is permissible in Islam is if you really don't have anything. If you really don't have any food to eat, you don't have nothing in the morning, nor do you have anything at night. In that case, you can beg. Does everybody understand that? We're living in the days of fitting in which the Sunnah has become abandoned. The Sunnah has become replaced with uh, uh, our own opinions, our own feelings. We have to work on this as Muslims. So this hadith brings about a lot of information for us to digest. Number one, as Muslims struggling to become believers, we're working hard to change our character during this sacred month of Ramadan to a character that's pleasing to Allah. So number one, we should not be greedy. We should never be greedy. And number two, asking for more than what you need is going to put you in danger of being punished by Allah. Because remember, Allah hates injustice. Allah hates deceit. Allah, Allah hates lying. Allah hates deceiving others. And also we learn from this hadith that we should learn to be content with what we have. You may not want to eat corn flakes for breakfast, but that's what you got. Eat it. Don't sit around uh, begrudging somebody else of their eggs and bacon because you don't have it, but you got something else that you can eat. Be content with what you have. And also, again, uh, this is the time of year where we give charity. We should be careful who we give our charity to. Y'all understand that? We were talking about this earlier. 
every imam, if you are a good imam, you should know who the needy Muslims are in your community. You should know that those women that don't have husbands, but they have children and they work, those women are needy. That woman over there who has a husband who works and provides for her, she's not needy. You should know who's eligible for zakat and who isn't. And also as Muslims, we should make sure to pay uh, our zakat that is due as soon as possible. Don't hold it off. We have the end, the Ramadan's end coming up, the zakat al fitr. That should be given to the masjid so the imam can take that money and go out and buy food so that the needy Muslims in his community can have a meal to break their, uh, their Ramadan with, okay? So you want to pay it before the E prayer. You want to pray, pay it before the E prayer. You don't want to pay it afterwards. And for those of us who do have regular zakat to pay, it's due a year. Whatever you have must have been in your possession for at least a year. When that year passes, you have to pay that zakat. Don't put it off. So mashallah, this is the hadith. Uh, that I wanted to go over uh, with you guys tonight. And mashallah, it's a nice hadith because uh, it's what we were speaking about uh, uh, since this is the last 10 days of Ramadan, uh, helping others, giving in charity. You don't want to go around begging for charity when you don't need it. There's people out there who do need charity and you're begrudging them. You're standing in their way. Okay.